Patuloy ang pangihimasok ng China sa ating teritoryo. Tinatawag nila ito Nine Dotted or Nine Dash Line. Oh, this is the Tanil Newe, this is the Tanil Newe, please go away quickly. What is at stake here is 80% of our exclusive economic zone. Halos lahat lang na bahura dito sa Pilipinas, gusto na lang kunin. Ayun nga, kapitbahay mo, magagalit ka na kukunan ka ng isang bagay sa loob ng bakuran mo na hindi nagpapaalam sa'yo. Nanindigan ng Malacanang na hindi isusuko ang baho di Masinlok at Ayungin Shul. Di rin kami sa papayag na basta-basta lang din nila sa makukuha tong isla na to. Filipino fishermen were harassed by the Chinese Coast Guard. Pinto ka na kami ng mga baril, okay? salubungin ka ng barko, mm. tapos tatawin ka ng ganun. Talagang tinatakot kami, Nag, ano sila ng water cannon. Tinatailangan natin ang kakampi. We've chosen to take it to the arbitral tribunal. China is out of step. Kinikayat ng Amerika ang China na panatilihin ang status quo. Four military aircraft. This is Chinese Navy. You are approaching our military alert zone. Please immediately. Kailangan lang din gamitin yung pirsa nila dahil alam na malakas sila. Pwede nga lang talagang galit. Hindi lang talaga galit ang abutin kasi hindi talaga wala tayong magawa sa kanila eh. Go, go! Nandito pa rin kami at uh, patuloy kami nagbabantay dito sa mga teritoryo natin sa West Philippine Sea. We may be losing some of the battles but we're not uh, losing the war. South China Sea contains rich, valuable resources such as oil, natural gas, minerals, and fish. That is why it is not surprising when conflicts in South China Sea arise. In fact, the area has experienced conflict for centuries. Most of the disputes have involved nations claiming islands or surrounding waters as part of their sovereign areas, primarily Spratlys and the Paracels. More recent disputes emerged in some areas of the South China Sea, such as the Scarborough Shoal, an area that barely consists of land and is mostly made up of uninhabited rocky outcrops, atolls, sandbanks, and reefs. There are several other nations who claimed for various islands in the South China Sea in the past. These nations are namely Taiwan, Brunei, Malaysia, and Vietnam. Taiwan, one of the claimants of the South China Sea, shares China's claim to virtually the entire South China Sea that dates back before the split between the communists and nationalists in 1949 following the Chinese Civil War. It has occupied Itu Aba, which it calls Taiping Island the largest feature in the South China Sea since 1956. In terms of geographical position, Scarborough Shoal is about 800 kilometers from Hong Kong and about 300 kilometers from the Philippine capital, Manila. Like the Spratly Islands, the area around Scarborough Shoal is an important shipping lane at the throat of the main thoroughfare into and out of Subic Bay, Philippines. Brunei's claims to the island are based on the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. Brunei states that the southern part of the Spratly chain is part of Brunei's continental shelf and exclusive economic zone, and therefore its territory and resources. However, Brunei does not practice any military control in the area. Malaysia's claims rests on the continental shelf principle, and its claims cover only a small number of islands in Spratlys, and the islands included in its exclusive economic zone of 200 miles as defined by the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. Malaysia has militarily occupied Swallow Reef, Arbisia Reef, and Marivellas Reef, which is part of the Spratly chain and is considered to be within Malaysia's continental shelf that gives it right to the islands. Meanwhile, Vietnam's claims are dependent on history and continental shelf principle. Vietnam states that the Spratly Islands, or what they call Truangsa Islands, are part of the Empire of Anam, Vietnam's ancestor in the 19th century, and claims the islands as the offshore district of the province of Kinhoa. In an atlas of Vietnam completed in 1838, Truangsa or Spratly were defined as belonging of Vietnamese territory. Vietnam claims that they have occupied and settled in the islands in the expedition sent by King Gia Lo. The French, who were Vietnam's colonial rulers, annexed the Spratlys in 1933, so Vietnam says the islands are theirs, as the inheritors of the French possessions. Vietnam claims are not clearly defined using archaeological evidence to bolster sovereignty claims. Other ASEAN countries which are not directly involved in the conflict are only dragged into the matter because of their concern towards their safety, especially since these countries are located in a reasonably close distance to the Scarborough Shoal. 
they are also concerned with the relationships between both China and the Philippines. The members of the ASEAN signed the Declaration on the Conduct of Parties in the South China Sea that aimed to resolve their territorial and jurisdictional disputes by peaceful means without resorting to the threat or use of force through friendly consultations and negotiations with sovereign states directly concerned in 2002. The current conflict in Scarborough Shoal is mostly between the Philippines and China. According to China, the Scarborough Shoal does belong to them. They claim to have discovered and drew a map of as early as 1279 during the Yuan Dynasty. Chinese fishermen from both the mainland and Taiwan have since used it. As a matter of fact, Guo Soujing, a Chinese astronomer, engineer, and mathematician, performed surveying of the South China Sea of the year 1279 and the surveying point was the Scarborough Shoal, which was considered part of the Zhuangxia Islands, which is renamed Huangyan in 1983. The fact that China holds three international treaties, namely the 1898 Treaty of Paris between the U.S. and Spain, the 1900 Treaty of Washington between Spain and the U.S., and the 1930 Treaty between Great Britain and the U.S. supports its claim over the territories in question. For China, this is already a territory that they've used for the past three years, making it their own. Having neighboring countries which try to attempt to take their rights is not enough validation in their perspective, since it's already their territory. Just because the majority took notice of this issue doesn't mean that they don't have the right in this show. The story may sound completely different for the Philippines, which is another country who claims the ownership of the Scarborough Shoal. The Philippines proves their ownership by maps dated back from the Spanish colonial period. Several official Philippine maps, published by Spain and the United States in the 18th and 20th centuries, show Scarborough Shoal as Philippine territory. The 18th century map Carta Hydrographica y Corográfica de las Islas Filipinas, 1734, shows the Scarborough Shoal then was named as Panacot Shoal. The map also shows the shape of the shoal as consistent with the current maps available as today. In 1972, another map drawn by the Malaspina expedition and published in 1808 in Madrid, Spain, also showed Bajo de Masinloc as part of Philippine territory. The map showed the route of the Malaspina expedition to and around the shoal. It was reproduced in the Atlas of the 1939 Philippine Census, which was published in Manila a year later and predates the controversial 1947 Chinese South China Sea claim map that shows no Chinese name on it. In regards of China about the treaties of Washington and Paris, the DFA asserts the basis of Philippine sovereignty. The United States claims that it remains neutral towards the growing conflict between the China and the Philippines regarding Scarborough Shoal, though it will inevitably be involved in the conflict, especially if it continues to quickly increase in gravity. According to the 1951 Mutual Defense Treaty, the United States promises to provide help if conflict between the Philippines and any other nation becomes violent. The said treaty acknowledges that an armed attack in the Pacific area, either on both parties, would be dangerous to its own peace and safety, and declares that it would act to meet the common dangers in accordance with its constitutional processes. There are three requisites for the treaty to invoke. First, an attack on the territory of either parties. Second, an attack on the island territories, Philippines or U.S., in its jurisdiction in the Pacific. And third, an attack on either party's armed forces, public vessels, or aircraft in the Pacific. The Philippine ships that are currently deployed in the Scarborough Shoal are public vessels. Therefore, if any of these public vessels comes under Chinese fire, the U.S. is to invoke the treaty, which will either result within the range of diplomatic censure to armed defense of the public vessels. If one or both parties refuse to settle things diplomatically, and resort to armed military attacks on each other, there is a high probability that the worst-case scenario might come into picture. War Aside from this reason, is another one which involves navigation rights. Since about half of the world's commercial shipping passes through the South China Sea, and most of the issues and territorial claims are about claims and islands on the sea, 
The U.S. is worried that when China gains all rights toward the islands and South China Sea, it would use its increasing sea and air power to close off the waters to transit by foreign vessels. The moment China does this, the U.S. would surely be involved since it would concern the matters of its national interests. Despite claiming to be neutral about the conflict, the U.S. is said to continue building up forces and helping the Philippines, particularly with its military forces. The U.S. is also conducting air and sea patrols in the South China Sea, specifically near Spratly's Islands, to assure freedom of navigation in those parts of the sea. The conflict at the West Philippine Sea is not only the concern of the government. As a nation, this is our fight as well. The care and defense of these riches at the sea is not only for us, but also for the future generations. We only inherited this paradise, and if we do not make a step now, there will no longer be a paradise like the Galayaan group of islands for the future generations to enjoy. Frankly speaking, the perfect solution is the solution that will unify us as neighboring countries and will result in peace and prosperity for everyone. We are now waiting for the verdict of the arbitration of the International Tribunal, which our experts are confidently saying will be in the favor of the Philippines. It is good to know that at this peaceful battle that the Philippines has been leading, we are being supported by international communities. But we must keep in mind that it is also our obligation as Filipinos to be ready for battle not only on arms but also of knowledge concerning this issue. There is no harm in raising our claims, but not in the form of harassing a neighbor. If the International Tribunal has given the verdict to support the territorial rights of the Philippines, China has no power to intrude and claim these islands. It will be a victory not only for us Filipinos, but also to the effectiveness of law, because in a civilized world, the right to draw territories is not dictated by the power of arms, but must be decided by the rule of law. So